In this video, we're going to take a look at Standard 712A, which says the student is expected to compare two groups of numeric data using comparative dot plots or box plots by comparing their shapes, centers, and spreads. There's a lot going on in this standard, so I want to take a few moments to review um, some of the components of this standard. So first, let's talk about a dot plot. What is a dot plot? A dot plot is a graphical representation to organize small sets of data that uses X um, dots or X's to show that to show the frequency that each number occurs. Um, from a dot plot, you can usually see the, the representation shows the range, outlier, shape, and spread of the data. Um, from the dot plot, you can use that information from the dot plot to determine measures of center, which is the mean, median, and mode, and the measures of spread, which is the range and interquartile range. So here's just an example of a dot plot. So this information, this data represented here is represented in this dot plot. So for example, if we look on the dot plot above the number six, there are three dots. That means that that value of six is represented three times in the data. So if we look, there's a value of six, here's a value of six, here's a value of six. So that means those three sixes are represented by three dots above the number six on the number line. So that's a quick review of a dot plot. Now let's look at a box plot. A box plot is sometimes also referred to as a box and whisker plot. Um, it is a graphical representation showing the five number summary of data. The shape of the box is related to the spread of the data. The data is divided into quartiles using the five number summary. So here's our five number summary. You have your minimum value of your data set. You have quartile one, which is sometimes abbreviated as Q1. That is the medium of the lower 50% of the data. You have the median of the data set. You have quartile three or Q3, which is the median of the upper 50% of the data. And then you have your maximum value of your data set. This is your five number summary. Um, inner quartile range can also be determined from the box and whisper plot. And that is a difference between quartile three and quartile one. So here's just a, a quick um, picture of a box plot with all these important characteristics identified. So in your box plot, you have your minimum value of your data set. You have the median value, which remember is the value that's in the middle of your data set. And you have your maximum value. To find Q1 or quartile one, you look at the first half of your data set and you find the median of those values. That's how you get quartile one. To find quartile three, you look at the second half of your data set between the median and the maximum, and you determine the median of those values, and that gives you your quartile three. The range, of course, is your difference of your maximum and your minimum value. The inner quartile range is a difference of Q3 and Q1, quartile three and quartile one. As far as how the data is distributed, 25% of the data is represented or distributed or is in uh, between the minimum value and Q1. 50% of the data is between the minimum value and the median. 75% of the data is between the minimum and quartile three and 100% of the data is between the minimum and the maximum value of the data set. So let's talk a moment about the shape of distributions of these graphical representations. Well, the shape can sometimes be referred to as skewed right. So what that means is the shape of the data when graphed has a tail to the right. So if we look at this dot plot and this box plot, they both have a tail to the right. This means that this data distribution is skewed right. Symmetric, when we have data that's symmetric, the shape of the data when graphed resembles a bell curve. So here the data is pretty evenly distributed. And here as well, you can see in the box plot that the data is evenly distributed. So this is what we would call symmetric. The shape of the data would be symmetric. 
skewed left, um, when the data is skewed left, the shape of the data when graphed has a tail to the left. So here in this dot plot, you can see we have a tail to the left. And in this box plot, we have a tail to the left. So this data would be, for, be referred to, or this representation would be referred to as skewed left. All right, let's take a moment and look at a released assessment item. This is from the 2016 STAR test for grade 7. The problem says, Mr. Kelso, I'm sorry, Mrs. Kelso and Mr. Bonham gave each of their students a small bag of colored tiles. The students each counted the number of purple tiles they received. The box plot display, the box plots display the data for both classes. So the top box plot is Ms. Kelso's class, and then the bottom box plot is Mr. Bonham's class. Which statement is best supported by the information in the box plots? So let's read each of these answer choices and then analyze the information in the graph. So answer choice A says the range of the data for Mr. Bonham's class is less than the range of the data from Mrs. Kelso's class. So remember that range means that we're subtracting our minimum value from our maximum value. So if we look at Mr. Bonham's class first, the minimum value um, for his box plot for his class is six, and the maximum value is 16. So if we wanna find the range for Mr. Bonham's class, the range for Mr. Bonham, and I'm just gonna abbreviate Mr. B, that means that we would subtract 16 minus six to get 10. So now let's look at the range of the data for Mills Kelso's class. Well, the minimum value for her class data is five, and the maximum value for her class data is 17. So for the range for uh, Mrs. K is 17 minus five, which is 12. So the range of the data for Mr. Bonham's class is less than the range of the data for Mrs. Kelso's class. Okay, that appears true, but I wanna check all the other answer choices. So let's move on to answer choice B. The data for Mrs. Kelso's class are more symmetrical than the data for Mr. Bonham's class. So if we look at Ms. Kelso's distribution of data and compare it to Mr. Bonham's distribution of data, the, his class data, it appears that Ms. Kelso's data is slightly skewed to the right, has a little bit longer tail to the right. So at WOW, if we look at Mr. Bonham's, his looks pretty symmetric. So the data for Ms. Kelso's class are more symmetrical than the data for Mr. Bonham's class is not correct. Answer choice C, the median number of the data for Ms. Mr. Bonham's class is less than the median number of data for Ms. Kelso's class. So let's find the median um, for Mr. Bonham's class data. And if we look, the median is 11. Here's our median for Mr. Bonham, and that has a value of 11. And the median for Ms. Kelso has a value of 10. So the median number for of data for Mr. Bonham's class is less than the median number of Ms. Kelso's class is not true. His value is 11, which is greater than 10. All right, the last answer choice, the inner quartile range of the data for Ms. Kelso's class is greater than the inner quartile range of the data for Mr. Bonham's class. So let's go ahead and find the IQR for Ms. Kelso, I'll just put a K. So that means we are subtracting quartile three. We're subtracting quartile one from quartile three. So if we look at Ms. Kelso, quartile three, the value of quartile three is eight. I'm sorry, that's the value of quartile one. The value of quartile three is 13. So if we subtract quartile one from quartile three or 13, minus eight, that gives us a value of five. Now let's find the interquartile range for
for Mr. Bonham's class. Again, we need to subtract quartile one from quartile three. So quartile one for Mr. Bonham's class has a value of five, six, seven, eight as well. His quartile three has a value of 14. So when we subtract 14 minus eight, we get a value of six. So the interquartile range of data from Ms. Kelso's class is greater than the interquartile range of data from Mr. Bonham's class. That is not correct. Mr. Bonham's IQR is six, which is greater than Ms. Kelso's IQR, which is five. So it does, it does appear that the correct answer for this problem is A, the range of data from Ms. Mr. Bonham's class is less than the range of data from Ms. Kelso's class.